Hello and welcome. Welcome back to those who have been following the series. Welcome to those who are new to the series, who decided they'd dive in just to watch this video. My name is Eamon Killian. I've been making a short set of tutorials on how to get going using IBM software. And today we're going to cover, as it says on the screen, some SSH and post install scripts. Most importantly, the post install scripts. Why the SSH? Well, what I'm going to cover under SSH is basically called Key Exchange. And instead of needing to log in um, with a password, you're going to have a key that will enable you to log in in a passwordless style. Now, why am I doing that? Well, you know, underpinning cloud is the ability to create lots and lots of virtual machines. And those who use software exhaustively do tend to create an awful lot of small machines, whether that's for testing or production or what for whatever reason, QA, etc. But you end up with a, you know, a vast quantity often of machines. And if you haven't installed like Tutorial 20, I think it was, uh, something like a Chef or a Puppet or a Salt Stack or one of these configuration management um, applications, it can be very hard to keep those machines, you know, in sync and in lockstep in terms of what packages are on there and what configuration setup those machines have. Equally, um, when you first create a machine, it's a little bit of a pain as we saw way back in the other tutorials um, possibly around tutorial three and four as far back as that once you create your machine you then have to go to the portal click on devices go to the particular device click on passwords grab the password so i have added a little script on them um, on my github page which will just get you the root password of a machine so again it's just a, a handy little utility script that you can download there from git but without that it's still you know many many steps and what you'd like to do what i like to do put it this way what i like to do is create several machines and know that i can just ssh straight in without needing a password and how do i do that well i use key exchange so what are we going to cover today? Well, we're going to cover creating an SSH key pair on my local Mac here. We're then going to create a new virtual machine on software. We're going to log into that virtual machine. I'm going to create a new admin user. Let's call it sysadmin. Um, I'm going to add that user to the wheel or sudoers file um, with access to be able to do an SU. Um, or sorry, a sudo, and then sudo su to get to root. Uh, we're going to copy the public key, the public side of my key, because when we create that key pair, there'll be a public and a private. We're going to copy the public one to that virtual machine, put it in the right directory, then we're going to be able to log out and log back in and test it's all working without needing a password. Um, we're also going to test that we can become root again without needing a password so everything will flow nice and easily. Then once we've tested that we can do that we're going to destroy the ability for anyone else to log in via SSH using a password at all. So that will effectively eradicate the ability for anyone to be able to SSH in unless of course they've got your private key. Now, really, they shouldn't be able to ever have access to your private key because it never leaves your machine. So that, that's the idea. It, in, it enhances your security dramatically. And then one final test, we're going to log out of all of that once we've destroyed the ability of anyone to log in with a password. We're going to test that. We're going to show that we can't log in as root anymore with a password. And we're going to do our test again as our sysadmin user and make sure that's working. So that's a real manual way of doing it. And that's really, I'm covering that in part one, just to show that this is how it occurs and this is what we do. What are we going to do afterwards? Well, in part two, it's quite handy that, but it's not quite as handy as it needs to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a bash script with all of the commands that we used in part one. And then we're going to put that script onto GitHub. And then we're going to add that script as a post install script within our software environment. 
Then we're going to create another virtual machine, brand new one, clean virtual machine. And once it's up and running, we're going to log in without a password because our script will have created all of those steps for us. What does that mean? Well, that actually means in the end, using those scripts, and I put the script on GitHub, you will be able to create many, many, many virtual machines and log in from your Mac or your PC and do it passwordlessly. But also in the full knowledge that every time you create a machine on software, you can simply just run this post and or ask it to run this post and soul script as part of the um, cloud virtual machine creation and you know you will get straight in on that machine and it will have what you expect to see. Now, for those who want to take it further, obviously once you've got that script and you now understand how to do post install scripts, that script can do any number of different things. And if you want to go through the, uh, the full hardening exercises around how to harden your Linux machines, there's no reason why you couldn't add the ability to yum remove and yum install any of the packages that you expect to see. You could deny all the cron jobs, you could disable um, any login other than a particular one, you could set the IP tables using the script we had earlier for IP tables, you could run that script, you could do a wget, grab that script off of, um, off of GitHub or wherever you're keeping that script, and then you could run that script as part of the post install. So this opens up an avenue for many, many DevOps options or systems admin options for you using IBM software. So without that, without further ado, look, let's get to it. Let's do some, uh, let's do some configuration. And I hope you enjoy this video. Mac, let's get doing some of the technical stuff. I've got myself a terminal here on my local machine. So what do we want to do? Well. I'm in my scripts directory, which is where I keep my actual, uh, all the scripts I've been working on. That is replicated up on the GitHub. Um, you will now see on GitHub, if you just want to dive straight in and have a look at the post install security script, um, you'll see it all there. But I'm going to walk through how I got to that script. Um, we want a machine, first of all. So let's create machine, and it's going to be the new version because I've updated to the new version of the software CLI. So I'm going to just run this script. We're going to call it SSH test uh, domain name software.com hourly machine. We're going to have a small machine. Operating system is going to be CentOS. And we are going to go in Amsterdam pod 3. Why not? Um, do we want to do it? Are we sure? Yep. Sending command now. It'll incur charges on the account. Let's just go back and make sure I did choose hourly. Yep. I don't want to end up straddled with a monthly server. Continue. Yes. And away it goes. So that will now talk to software and create our virtual machine. Give that a couple of seconds. It will come back to us. There we go, there's our machine. I've just had my email through, so if I swing that down there and I do an update on our page here, it will show up in just a second. Give it another minute. Oh, I've just had my notification on email that it's gone for provisioning. And there it is. Right, so we have our SSH, or we will do in a few minutes. That's fine. We need to do a bit more work here locally. So if I CD to my local directory, and I CD from there to .ssh, I do an ls, I've got nothing in there but known hosts. What we want to do is we want to generate our keys. So to do that, I'm using SSH keygen minus T, and I'm going to have some RSA keys. It's going to save them into this directory as id rsa and id underscore rsa dot pub. That's fine. We're happy with that. Passphrase. Well, you can have one if you want, but it sort of defeats the point of passwordless logon if you then introduce a passphrase as well as a password. Um, so I'm going to leave that blank. And there we go. 
So in here now, I should have two files. There we go. So this file in particular, id underscore rsa dot pub, is the public key that we want to take. So we will take this entire public key and put it on our server in a minute when it's available. So that's going to take another couple of minutes just to create this server. But once it's up and running, we can log into it as root. Well, what bit of the process is it on now? Cloud provision still. So it won't be there just yet. Give that another couple of minutes. Join me in a second. So welcome back. Everything is up and available now. Our machine is actually fully ready. As you can see, it's not waiting on anything. So we can go to that machine. We can go into passwords. Yeah. And we can grab the password. And we can open up a terminal on our local machine here. Or oh, better keep the... Uh, we can go SSH, root, at, and this is standard procedure. I'm going in on the public here. You could go in on the private. It doesn't really matter. 88. Yes, it's a new machine I want to go into. And then we paste the password. Fine. So we're on that machine. It's a lot of steps, though, and that's what we're looking to avoid. Um, we're looking to avoid having to remember to go onto the portal, to gain access, to go to that password bit, to grab the password into cut and paste in all of that stuff. What we'd actually like, if we're doing many, many cloud machines, um, and when I say many, to be honest, even in excess of three starts to become unwieldy and frankly annoying to have to do all of these click, 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 clicks all over the place. Now, I wrote a little script that would allow you, and it's on my GitHub as well, to grab the password. It, it awks and cuts it out of the command line. But even then, it's still a bit of a pain to have to go and do that. So what we're looking to do in this video is create a standard user that you can have, that you will know about, that will allow you to passwordlessly log in once a machine is created. So let's do it manually first to show you the steps you take to create a passwordless login. So we want to add a user first, and I'm going to call it sysadmin. That's easy enough. Password, sysadmin, and we'll just have a password on here as well. Why not? So we now have a user with a password. Fine. That, as part of that process, it creates a home directory called home sysadmin and we're going to add to that with a an, oh, ssj ssh we're going to add a dot ssh home uh, within that home directory once we have our ssh we now need to go back to our key that we generated just a few minutes ago and i've grabbed it up here i want to grab this all of this Copy that into my buffer, go back up here, and I'm going to echo that key, the public key, into a file within home, sysadmin the user, dot ssh slash authorized keys. So I'm going to echo that key into there. We can do a quick, a quick more on that. Dot ssh slash authorized, and there it is. That's fine. And if you want to add more keys that are authorized keys, you just echo them to the bottom of the file. So you can have many, many different users allowed straight login onto this system or sorry, not many users, many, many different machines allowed login as sysadmin with their particular authorized key, public key to go with their private key. So, um, now we have that in place. Well, the only problem is I've created them as root, so I probably need to just be absolutely sure that sysadmin owns the directory home sysadmin.ssh. 
and the authorized keys. That's fine. I also want to set particular permissions on this directory for a start, .ssh, and I want to have the file be read only by the owner of that file. So now we've got our permissions. Excellent. So that's fine. What do we need to do next? Well, I tell you what, let's just check that now this is usable. So, ssh root, uh, not root, we're sysadmin at 159.8208.88. And we're in. You see no password. Perfect, that's exactly what we want to achieve. Now, we want to add that this person can sudo. So, if I give it the password, I'm not in the sudo response, and that's no surprise. Plus the fact, I don't want to be asked for a password on this one either. So how do we do that? Well, we go in and we vi etc sudo, whoops, etcx, sudoers. And we find the line, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to do it that way, I'm just going to walk down this file from the very top. You will get very quickly to, I'm not going to use my shortcuts, I'm just arrowing down through the file. Eventually I get to a line that begins root. There it is. And under that line, you'll get that warning, that's fine. We're going to add sysadmin, tab, all, equals all tab no password all that's what you want to add so now from here if I do a sudo su I have a syntax error near line 99 in the sudoers file okay so I want to go down to slash root. I have obviously done something wrong. What have I done wrong? Oh, look what I've done wrong. Password is spelt P-A-S-S, -S, not P, not PAS word <laughs> for our platform as a service. Right, lovely. Let's sudo. There we go. So passwordless login and passwordless sudo. Perfect, that's exactly what we want to achieve. Um, now we know we can do it, but I'm just going to double check, treble check. Can we get in? Yes, we're in. Sudo su, and we're root. Perfect. Exit, exit. Now we want to stop root being able to log in, or indeed anyone being able to SSH into this machine remotely using a password. How do we do that? Well, that's fairly easy. We vi the etc ssh sshd config file. And again, I'll just arrow down. You go down to a line that says password authentication. It's down here somewhere. Password authentication. And you change that to be no. That destroys the ability for anyone to log in using a password across SSH. Now this can be very destructive if you haven't already configured what we've just done, which was a passwordless logon using our new user, sysadmin. So I'm going to save that. Now for that to become active, we have to restart the service. So even though it's system CTL now, we can still do service sshd restart and it redirects us to system CTL. This I guess is giving us all an opportunity to learn the new syntax. But that has restarted it. And now if I SS, if 
I bring up that line again and I use root to log in, nothing. Permission denied. We're not even going to get asked for the password. However, if I go in a systems admin, we're in. So we have access to our machine and we've now manually enabled passwordless access. So just to recap on those steps again, we added the user, created a password for the user, we made a directory called .ssh in that new user's home directory, we popped in a new file called authorized keys into the .ssh directory, we made sure the permissions were read only on authorized keys and read, write and execute on the directory .ssh. And we also made sure that that directory and the authorized keys file were owned by the user sysadmin. Then all we had to do was add a line to the sudoers saying that sysadmin was allowed to sudo and sysadmin could do that without a password. And then finally, we turned off, we destroyed the ability by saying password authentication no in the sshd config file. And then we restarted the sshd service. And there you have it. That's manually how to get yourself passwordless login using key exchange into your software machines. What we're going to do next, because that's useful, okay, don't get me wrong, it's useful, but it was all a bit manual, and hey, if that is supposedly replacing your ability to not have to click around on the software portal to get passwords, you know what, I'd give me the passwords any day, um, because it's only a couple of clicks. The reason we went through that was A, to show it can be done, and B, we now have the command list of what we need to achieve, which we can make into a shell script. And then we will take that shell script and we will make it a post install script. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So starting next, part two, join me then when we'll write a little script to do all of this stuff. Thank you.